Hey moviegoers, let's talk it. In this video, we are going to be talking spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, definitely go see it or watch our spoiler free review that we did. We don't talk about any spoilers, nothing is given away in that video, but in this video we are going to be discussing everything. And here with me to do that is my brother Alan, because again, Hi, my yeah. wife has colorophobia, she's afraid of clowns. So, let's just start this off. Yeah. How did, how did you think it went, overall? Well, I think it was pretty good. Um, it was really tough doing the spoiler-free review, I'm not going to lie, because yeah. there's so many amazing things in this movie and it's hard to talk about it without spoiling it for somebody. Um, I thought they stuck to the source material really well. I thought that uh, the character development was lacking, um, but I thought that each... I thought they did a good job with their casting roles. I thought that Bill Skarsgård was a fantastic choice and did a great job portraying Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Yes. And just as a little trivia, uh, when Pennywise does those eye movements, I read that that is actually Bill Skarsgård doing that. No CGI was used to have his eyes move in different directions. He can and actually do that, that apparently. I don't know if that's true, but I did read that somewhere. It was on IMDb trivia page, so you know, you guys can go check it out if you want. But uh, I, yeah, he was a really good choice for that role. Absolutely. Um, he, he filled the big clown shoes of Tim Curry, and he did it well. Um, and I, I gotta bring up the very beginning of this movie with Georgie. The Georgie scene, I thought was really, really well done. Almost too well done. Yes. I was shocked by this scene. And if you know, if you've seen it and you know the material of the book, you know that they played it out almost perfectly how it is in the book, um, with the exception of it taking him into the sewer. That never happens in the book, if you haven't yeah. read the book. I was, I was a little surprised by that. I, I remember that them, that. I remember him not being taken. I remember him just, they were, he was dead. And that's how it was in the book. He, was, yeah. he died from blood loss and shock because no one came out to get him. Now, there was a neighbor who didn't just ignore him out there. The neighbor did come out in the book, did come out and see him, but he was too late. So he went to him, but he was already too late and he was dead. That scene, though, where he bites off Ooh. his arm, I was actually not expecting them Me to show neither. it. Me neither. That early in the movie, shocked. I was like, whoa, they're actually okay, doing it. Okay, here that, we go. That surprised me. And that was one of the creepier moments because I did not expect his teeth to come out like that and that was that was one of those cgi moments where it felt a little too overpowering with the cgi but it was really good and if you haven't seen our spoiler free review then you should note that we had a big issue with the cgi usage in this movie yes mainly because neither one of us really gets too freaked out by cgi in my personal opinion it looks like you are watching a cartoon creature come after you um if you grew up in the era like I in an era like I did where the the effects were practical effects, which means if you're watching aliens and there is an alien on the screen, that alien was a was real. Like obviously it wasn't a real being, but it was created. It's a costume someone's wearing. It is a it, it physical space. It exists. Obviously I know it's not a real creature that moves around on its own of its own accord but it existed somewhere out there. And that element kind of plays in your mind a bit. But whereas the CGI is someone's computer screen. It's like a video game. It's not that, to me, in my opinion, it's not, it's not scary. Yeah. It's creepy, but it's not scary. It's right. like, they did a great job that was the real? The CGI is phenomenal in this oh, movie. Yeah. It, it's fantastic. I cannot say enough about how impressed I was with their ability to, to do what they did with Pennywise. But it's just my own, in my own experience, it's, the CGI is just not going to get to a level until they can make it look where you can tell no difference that he's actually a CGI person <laughs> and not real. To, there's just no way it's going to do anything to me in, a, from, in the horror aspect. Yeah. Unless you jump scare like with Insidious. That, that is one of the problems that I have with horror movies now is we, we have gotten pretty desensitized to horror movies mm -hmm. to where jump scares are really the only thing that works. Right. And there weren't that many I'd never jumped once in this movie I think because I, I kind of saw it coming every time um, I think the only point I had actually jumped and got caught me off guard was the scene where we could talk spoilers so that's mm -hmm. right. so yeah this is the this is the, it was a scene when she was turning to leave the bathroom and Pennywise grabbed her by oh, the throat yeah. that was probably the only scene that caught me off guard even though I should have known it was coming because it was in the trailer yeah, I, I didn't expect it to take 
place at that moment. Me neither. I was, that's why I think it shocked me so much because it was like, whoa, wasn't expecting <laughs> that. Um, yeah, the, how we, what we said earlier about Bill Skarsgård being cast as Pennywise was brilliant. All the other kids, all the, all the actors were cast very brilliantly. Well. Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things coming over to, to It, which is a, a movie that the Duffer Brothers, the creators of Stranger Things, really, really wanted to direct. They wanted to direct It so badly, but they were told that they were not experienced enough. For him to come over, it was it was fun because it's like, hey, Stranger Things, it's it. They're kind of one and the same. Much the same ish. thing, yeah. Very, and very similar. Him to play uh, Richie was he pulled that off. He did really a really well. good job, yeah. Again, like we said in our spoiler free review, the, the jokes were a little inappropriate, especially for a 12, 13 year old, however they old we're they are. Old, uh, we just... It's inappropriate for them to be saying, but then they again, were still funny. That's that was what I'm, I'm back and forth on it. I, I laughed several yeah, times. It was funny. I don't think they overused the F word for that age group in terms of the actors. Like if it was my child on screen, I said this in the spoiler free review. But if you haven't seen that, go check that out. But it it felt that the uh, the, the usage of the F word by such a young children. I, I don't think it it was. It just kind of bothered me a little bit. I, I get it that that talk is in the real world. That's one thing. But I thought that the the, the actors. If it was my kid, I'd be a little ticked off that they were having him say the F word that many times. Um, you know, it just, it's they, just me being an old prude, I guess. They kind of abused the R rating in that sense. Right. I mean, it it needed to be rated R. There there needed to be some swearing in it, but they they overused it a little bit. And it was a bit awkward in some of the other scenes, which, yeah. where they were all disrobed and they were all. Yeah. A little bit, you know. It being an R-rated movie, it's not geared toward 12, 13-year-old kids. They can't even get it's in to see like, it. Yeah, they can't even get to see it. And for them to linger on Beverly's body for that long of a shot, I mean, it makes... It's, it's, it's a fun. It's a funny scene because of the, the boys, how they're reacting to it. But it's uncomfortable to watch as an adult. It's like, as okay, an adult male, yeah. let's, let's move on. But like we said, the acting... Top notch, much, much better than the original. The overall, this movie is, in my opinion, much better than the original. I would say if you were to take 1990 version and compare them on equal grounds, then yes, it's absolutely way better. But if you put it in terms of its time frame, it kind of gives, I think it's right about, in terms of story, in terms of way they, they pulled off this particular, um, this particular story, I think it's they're they're pretty they're pretty close to being really well laid out. I think that they're very equal on equal playing grounds from uh, from from the book. To rave just a little bit more about Bill Skarsgård's performance as Pennywise, there are there's so many examples of his per great performance in this movie. In in particular, the part with with Georgie when he's talking about like popcorn and stuff, where he's doing the pop pop pop. And he's, he's getting Georgie to laugh, and you can see like just how annoyed he is by that moment. He's like, I just, I want to kill this kid right now. Well, he's not and fearing you see him. it. He's losing that fear. He's yeah. losing the fear, which is what he needs to feed on. So when he starts losing that element, it makes him realize, oh, I got to make sure that I don't let that go. And by the way, that conversation with Georgie is a lot more similar to the way it was in the book. It's very similar. The smells that he said he was smelling, that <laughs> happens a lot of times in the experiences with Pennywise, specifically with Georgie. Yeah, that just you could see it in his eyes like I mean they they enhanced his eyes so that they were not in the darkness but that, that scene was my probably my favorite <sighs> depicted scene of yeah. Pennywise himself because I mean his creepiness level there was just incredible mm -hmm. I, I mean I cannot say enough about how happy and, ex and happy I am with Skarsgård being Pennywise I mean he portrayed that character so well, I, I can't speak highly enough about that. It's, yeah. I, th I think another great part with him was the part in the, the house when uh, I think Bill figures out, like, if, as long as we don't believe, he, he has no power over it. And right before he's about to, like, kill Eddie or something, he senses that and he's, like, he gets all pissed off and stuff. And that. You could see it in that performance, and it's just a tiny little moment, but it works so well. And it's, oh man, that, gave, that, that creeped me out too. 
for sure. Yeah, he he was great, and in in all the non CGI part, I mean, he his costume, his makeup, mm -hmm. I mean, every bit of the element that made him Pennywise made him so much more Pennywise. It was just, I, I just we we can't even, we can't even talk about how much we liked him yeah. as Pennywise. So I think we should probably we can make a whole through. thirty minute video yeah. on just that. <laughs> But, yeah, there, there's a scene later on uh, that I thought was one of the more creepy parts. It wasn't the creepiest part, but it was the projector scene. And I was actually surprised by that scene because they showed quite a bit of it in the trailer. Right. But didn't give it all away. Which was great. Because yeah. I was like, oh, well, I already know how this one's yeah. going to go. And then it, it went in a completely different way that I thought didn't, I did not see ex coming. And how he pops out of the screen and he's like gigantic. Huge. That was that was creepy to me. It didn't. That was probably the scariest part. But still, it wasn't. It didn't make me jump or anything. I'm not gonna have nightmares about it. But it was creepy. And the CGI again, you could tell it was CGI because obviously he's not that big, and they couldn't make a live puppet that big. It was just so ridiculous. But. It was still really well done. Very well and done. And the way that, because it was flashing, the projector was flashing, you only see flashes of it, you don't see the whole thing. That was really well done. Agreed. And we also need to make sure we talk about the time frame of this movie. Mm -hmm. It's important to note that this is in 1988 to 1989. So the events with, with Georgie happened in 1988, and the events that we actually see for the rest of the film are in 1989. Which means that depicting the second chapter, because in case you didn't stay to the end, there is, is actually titled It Chapter One, mm -hmm. which in my opinion could have been two chapters in and of itself, um, which we talk about in a minute. But it is It Chapter One, and this whole entire thing that we, our entire storyline that we get is just from the kids' perspective and what they did. Now, the limits that they pushed the, as well as they did for this, I can only imagine that it's going to be in 2018 when we're going to get the sequel, which will be them as adults. I'm curious to see who they're going to choose to play that adult. And I'm also anxious to see how they're going to tie in the elements of the story. Maybe they'll take that opportunity to develop more of the kids' characters. Probably not, because it seems like they're just going to focus on what happened then. And then the next movie is specifically going to be everything that happens after, which is when they're adults and they come back. I know she references it. If you've seen it, obviously, you're watching this, if you've seen it. The end, she references how she saw herself in the future, mm. saw all of them in the future standing there. Now, we know, if you've, read, if you've seen the 1990 version and if you've read the book, big spoiler if you haven't, so pause it or mute it, <laughs> Stanley does not go back nope. to that place. He commits suicide prior to going out. So, we know that her vision is not actually accurate. Nope. If she saw all of them. I do like that they hint at that, though. I do, too. Because Stanley is the most hesitant to do anything about this. And he was really mad at Bill because that, because Pennywise, it, as, like, that painting, misfigured woman. Which was, which was really, really, that was creepy. to me one of the creepiest yeah. things in there. In the when, when she was on his face. That was the scariest part to, to me. To me, it was when they first introduced her as a oh, live action. Oh, when standing behind him? standing behind With him. With the flute? With the flute. Yeah. That, that was that, creepy. That sent chills down my spine yeah. a little bit because I didn't know how they were going to approach his... I saw that, I'm like, oh, that's going to be... I knew you can tell what it's going to be. Yeah. But then when it's that big, I was just assuming that the painting was going to be a <laughs> CGI painting, like, coming out of something. Mm -hmm. But when they did it with her, like, as a life... Like, that that threw me a little bit. Yeah. It creeped me out just a bit. Didn't scare me, but creeped me out just a bit. Well, well the setup of him putting the picture back up and she's, and she's gone... There. Yeah. It's like, oh... Oh gosh, that was good. <laughs> I knew, I knew that was, I, I knew it was going to be in that scene, obviously, but I didn't know how they were going to do it and how she was going to look because I didn't get a good enough look. And then she at the painting, like, I was like, real quick. Huh? <laughs> it, I, of what I've seen of Mama, I've only seen like a tiny part of it. It looked similar to the climax of that movie where Mama, I don't know if it's the climax, but where Mama or something is chasing after the girls yeah. through the house. That's what that's the first thing that came to my mind, which makes sense since the director did, yeah. the, did Mama, which I have not seen yet. I want to see that now that I've seen it. Yeah. Um, the bullies in this movie. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about those. They were good. I thought we could have used more of them, though, because he kind of... Um, they disappear for a while. And Belch, I don't even think they ever say Belch's name. They do. They do? Briefly. It's right after he burps. It's like, okay. Belch, where did you come from? Or something like yeah. that. 
So my, I, I, have a, I have a problem with the way they did the bullies. I, I really do. And uh, that is because, one, I could hardly understand anything <laughs> that Henry Bauer said. He spoke so fast. Um, I thought the, the scene where he kills his dad was straight out of the book. I thought that was definitely something they could have put in the, in the 1990 version because it was so important to understand how cold-hearted he actually was, even as a child. And um, that he was doing Pennywise's biddings, pretty much. Yeah, it kind of shows more that Pennywise is really pushing him along in his, his, his growth. The boys, I feel like, were incredibly underdeveloped, and we'll talk more about the other characters, too. But, like, focusing on the boys, they were extremely underdeveloped. I, they have such a huge part in the book, and, they, and a huge part in the original 1990 film. I was shocked at how little part they had in this movie. Um, the the fact that they introduced Patrick Hockstetter, which was great because mm. they didn't even bring him in at all mm. in, in the 1990 version, and he is a big part of of the book. He, he he's a little bit more demented in the book. Uh, he's very messed up in the book. And the scene there's a great scene in the book where where his death occurs it happens nothing like in the movie where he's attacked by. Zombies. Zombies, yeah. Um, in the book, he's attacked by leeches, and it's very descriptive as to what happens when a leech gets onto his face and specifically onto his eye. Um, but that scene that I really thought it was a good scene because you, you, his character is developed to be such a horrible person mm. of how he treats animals and how he just is because he's really sick and demented. That uh, you know, obviously, you aren't happy that a kid's getting killed, but at the same time, the way that scene kind of plays itself out, you're like, Whew, thank goodness, because Beverly is hiding and sees everything that happens. So Beverly knows, and Beverly's, you know, in danger. So the whole time in the book, you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to Beverly? Because she's right there. And I thought that scene would have been perfect mm. in this kind of a movie because they could have, because of what they did with the level of gore with Georgie's arms yeah. and all that stuff that I thought for sure when they showed Patrick Hockstetter, I was like, yes, they're going <laughs> to put that scene. For some reason, I don't know why, but I really enjoyed that scene in the book. I thought it was a very good you know, it plays on your fears, and he's afraid of leeches, of all things. Um, a kid who's, you know, in, in, the, in the book, he's trapped, I forget what kind of an animal it is, he's trapped this animal in a fridge, and he's waiting for it to die. And he keeps checking on it to wait for it to die, and every time he gets mad that it's not dead. So he's come back to check, and it's finally dead, and that's when the leeches come at him out of the, the, the not to ruin anything, I'm sorry for spoiling the book, but uh, if you're going to read this, monstrosity you got to get to about somewhere in here <laughs> to get to that so you got a long way to go but his character i was really hoping that they would do that because even in the previews i was excited for that because they in the previews they show him poets putting up the poster yeah. of patrick hox that are being missing mm -hmm. and i was really excited for them to develop but they didn't but then it was really let down that they didn't develop any of the bullies at all no nope. not even the main he's the main villain in a physical in the physical world and now or I'm sorry, in the, the kids portion and in the adults portion. Mm -hmm. And I don't know I don't know if they're actually gonna put him in the adult portion because He fell down he the fell wall. really far. I really think, fast. I mean obviously Pennywise I mean, could catch him and save him if he wanted to. And I think but, that's what he's gonna do. Because the the reason I say that they're gonna definitely bring him back is because they didn't show him die. That's they didn't true. show him. They show everybody else, but they yep. did not show him die. So my thought That's process cool. is in the next one, they're going to show him survive mm -hmm. because they have mentioned it in the 1990 movie and they mentioned it in the book too. He's going to confess to killing all the kids. The, the lack of development of each of these individual characters. Yeah. I, I didn't feel like I knew any of them. No. You knew them as like, a group. I, did, I cared for him because... I had grown up with the 1990 version, and I knew which character was which. Mm -hmm. But in with this, if I hadn't seen that original movie, I wouldn't really know much about these characters. I'd be like, okay, why is this? Why is Richie always cracking jokes? He's just what he's, is beep, he's beep, annoying. Richie. Yeah, it's I don't think they ever once. did that. Yeah. they did say. Yeah, Pennywise. Pennywise did, right. said it when he was coming in that room with clowns. Said beep beep, Richie. Yeah, I thought they should have used that more often. They, they, they were saying shut up, Richie, but they didn't say beep beep. Beep beep, Richie was. I thought that would have been a good. It's, it's very important in the in the story if you if you want to because there's not just a relationship between the kids you actually have a relationship that develops develops between each individual kids 
at kid and Pennywise. Mm. So Pennywise obviously knows your deepest fears, and he can't hurt them because of how well they're together. He can when they're when they're together. He can hurt them when they're by themselves. So he has to play their fears. But he knows so much about each one of them that it was really just in this particular rendition it was all just their fears mm. until that like they were hinted at the beep beep richie it, it felt like in even in the 1990 version and in the book he played more to their fears than in this one he played to one fear for the most part for each one of them where in the book and the movies he's he's plays to their one fears and collectively their fears um, specifically the werewolf, I was a teenage werewolf, that's Richie's fear, but they also, the other kids can see it, and then in the whole scene when they're in, at 29 Ebold Street in that house, the, which in the book, or sorry, in the 2017 movie is the well house, that is a very important, a big scene, which plays out similar to the book version of that scene, when the book, he, they're attacked by the werewolf, um, instead of just Pennywise as Pennywise, they are attacked as from the werewolf. And I really have to say, I'm really upset that they didn't bring in the silver. Mm. silver oh, dollars. yeah. They, they just had the little, the bolt gun. Bolt gun, yeah. Yeah. I, I, didn't, <clears throat> I didn't like that change at all. It, I also didn't really get it. I mean, I, I think I get it, but when he didn't have it loaded, Mike Hanlon's like, it's not loaded, and he still tries to shoot. It's Is it just believed. because he believed that it was going to yeah. shoot? The reason the silver worked in the werewolf is because they believed, they believed it would work. Because silver, how do you kill a werewolf? You kill a werewolf kill with silver, silver yeah. with a silver bullet. So they, in the book, they melt down silver dollars and they make them into like slugs for the slingshot. And in the in the movie, it's silver earrings. So in those, it, it, that, that's what. I don't mean to spoil the book. I don't mean to spoil what's potentially going to be in the next chapter of it. But in the book, the silver dollars are very important because. They have them down in the sewers, and Ben Hanscom has one left over, but he gives it away to a bartender when they introduce Ben's character, or after Mike calls Ben in the future. And it's important because they need that silver. Mm. It's important. If they would have had it, it would have changed the way the outcome takes place as adults. So it's it's a kind of I was really kind of hoping they would introduce that. I mean, it's I know it's nitpicky, but I was really hoping that they would bring that into it. But my my biggest qualm is the character development. I loved everything about this movie except that they didn't give you enough investment in the characters. You you yeah. don't can't be like Mike said, it's because we've seen the original. It's because I've read the book that I know how to appreciate each of these individual characters. We were sitting next to people who I don't think had seen either <laughs> one. And they didn't they they thought it was this, probably the scary one of the scariest things. Yeah. Based on their comments, they didn't even know what to oh, expect yeah. and what is going to happen. Oh, they were making some loud comments too. That kind of got annoying. Yeah, a little bit. We, we were sitting two or three seats away from a guy that was just talking out loud almost the entire movie. But uh, I have to say, the climax of this movie felt a little too much like an action movie. Yeah. It didn't, I mean, yes, there are horror aspects to it because he's trying to still prey on their fears while he's getting beat up, but it, it felt too much like an action movie. And it played out better than in the 1990 version because that one, it's just as simple as he picks up uh, Stan puts him against the wall and then they spray the asthma spray Which is actually it. the way it plays out in the book. The way I was movie, hoping that they do that. The 1990 version. The battery acid. Yeah, that, I can't believe they didn't do that. Yeah. There's so many things that I was like are so crucial to the story, even in the 1990 version, that they didn't include in this was frustrating. But, I mean, I get it. You're, you're bringing it up to a new generation. You're, you're bringing this, introducing this to new people who maybe have not ever even thought, considered reading this book. Um, have ne weren't even born when the 1990 version came out. So, like, you're, you're introducing this as a new film, you know, their own twist. But there's so many crucial elements. Like, this is battery acid, you slime. And, yeah. then, and, and the, the fact that Beverly was, was the one who was supposed to shoot them with the... Mm -hmm. Like, that, all those elements. The, the more we talk about it, the more I think was lacking in this yeah. movie. It's like, those were some crucial elements to the root of the story. And it Beverly, wouldn't have taken that long for them to... To, to develop, develop that, that at all, no. Maybe an extra five, ten minutes. Yeah, maybe, maybe leave a out little the bit sheep more, part because that had nothing to do with anything. Mike Hanlon's fear in the book is birds. He's afraid of birds. And uh, it, it's bizarre because Stanley fends off 
uh, Pennywise the, in his first encounter with the Book of Birds. Huh. Um, but Mike Hanlon's oh, yeah. experience is a bit bizarre in the book with a gigantic bird, um, which I get why they wouldn't put that on film. It's a little, it may be a little too out there for some audiences, but I mean, it works in the book um, well, I thought. Um, but the, uh, the, the crucial element of Beverly being the one, like I didn't get, they hinted to the turtle in this one. They get the turtle of the Legos. They said there's a turtle. Mm, they, they think yeah. they kicked. So they're hinting at the turtle, which if you haven't watched our review of the 1990 version, I go in a little bit more, in, in maybe too much detail about the book like I'm doing in this one. But in the book, the turtle is the guiding force for them. So they're probably, I, I don't know if they're going to introduce that in the adult version, mm. but they hinted at it to this, which doesn't make sense at all if you don't bring up the points that it's like they are being helped, that they are yeah. being guided. And I didn't see that at all. It's just a, a ragtag group of kids who just happened to get lucky with the methods that they chose to defeat yeah. it. They you just know? somehow discovered, hey, if we don't believe, you can't right. harm us. Right. <laughs> and they, they have, well, yeah, and if we're all together, we're stronger. And, and, you know, they don't really, they find that out because they're able to defeat them when they're together, not just because of pure random chance. Like yeah. I think in this more version, then there, it wasn't until Richie and, and Bill were looking at the three doors where they realized they needed yeah. to stick together. It's like a revelation that happened at that point. No, it was a revelation when they were able to hurt it when they were together. Like they found out that they could really do some damage to mm -hmm. him and win. And that he's afraid of them when they're together. I, I, I want to ask you about this because I don't know how it is in the book, but I know how it is in the 1990 version. With the floating... In the 1990 version, they're in spider webs and stuff. In this one, they're actually like floating. Is that how it is in the book? It's a little weird in the book, but yeah, I think it's it's more spider webs because he is a spider, okay. so it's they're yeah. they're webbed and, and it's 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 been a while since I've read the I read the book and I've read a lot of books in between. Um, so if I remember correctly, I mean, once you get closer to the end of this book, you're almost like, all right, let's get. <laughs> if, as I said in the 1990 review, the book ends very weird, so you kind of get lost a little bit um, in how it ends. Um, it's creative, I'll give him that, but it's a bit bizarre. Uh, so if I remember correctly, I believe they were webbed or they okay. were, they were floating. Um, okay. but I don't think it, I, I don't think it was the way it was portrayed in, cause it wasn't like a Pennywise stage and right. all that stuff. And I, I, I did like that I aspect did too. of it, it, it cause it made it a little bit more creepy. Agreed. And I just, I, I appreciate some of the creative licenses that they took in it. Not all, but some. I'm just going to harp, harp home on how I'm upset I am about the character development. I just can't believe that they did not. I mean, that's this whole movie. That's this whole yeah. entire point of this is the relationship between these kids. They're each individual strength, each of them's individual ability to take down it and to beat it, and its relationship with them individually and with them as a group. And I feel like that was taken away to just give mm. you cheap scares by jump scaring you. Yeah. Uh, I really think they missed it on this. I think they could have made a... I think it's a. I still think it's a good movie. I still want to see it again, um, maybe with less critical of a mindset. Um, but you know, going into a new movie like this is like you go in, and you're like, okay, well, we just watched the original. I've read the book. I'm going to go in. And I'm going to see all the things they did right and all the things they did wrong, <laughs> rather than just enjoying it as someone's creative work. So obviously, we are both pretty passionate about this movie. It's kind of a beloved story to us. We grew up watching the original we 1990 quote version. We quote certain spots of it. Yeah. And it wasn't until we watched it again recently that I realized how much I quote <laughs> some of the lines from it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's so crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> So to keep this thing under three hours, we're gonna cut it here and uh, move on. I could talk about this for hours, so could Mike. We're passionate about it, so we're just gonna cut it here. Yeah, and we, we, come, we wanna have a conversation with you guys, so let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, free range, you could post spoilers. We've been talking spoilers, so it's not like your comments are gonna be get removed or anything. So yeah, let us know what you guys thought of this rendition of it. And also where you think this may be going. If, you, if you've read the book and you are much more clear on it than I am, then please be sure to like, give your fan theories. Think about why are these, where you think they're going to take this universe. In my opinion, I think they could have turned this into four movies easily. They could have invested two hours, or the first two and a half hours into the part of the kids, part of the adults, part of the kids, part of the adults. I think they could have done so many different things with this. I'm happy with what they did. Thought they could have done better, of course. Check out our spoiler-free version for our grades. Yeah, because this video, we, we don't need to give our grades. We already did that. Yeah. And uh, also, just as a challenge, 
Who do you think should be cast as each character as in their adult forms? I honestly don't have a list right now, but if you, if you guys want to know, I'll put it in the comments. Maybe we'll make another video, who knows? But uh, I'm curious as to know what you guys, who you guys think should play the adult versions of these characters. And uh, I was happy to have my brother here to do these happy videos with me. It was, it was fun talking it. I'm sure he'll be back doing another video sometime in the future. At least it part two. <laughs> yeah, at, at least. <laughs> so, and if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of when we upload new content. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.